an example of the very worst thing you could do for your neck. Notice how the sofa arm is pushing on the back of the head rather than the middle of the neck. Notice how there's no support for the lumbar region. There's no support for the laptop. So she may not be hurting right now. This is the classic case of a person that comes in and they don't know why, but they're having chronic jaw tension. They have TMJ problems. They're wearing a bite guard. They have chronic headaches. They have neck pain, pinched nerve in the neck shooting down the arm. But they have no clue what's caused it. They have never had an injury that they know of. Without realizing it, this is cumulative. When you do it incorrectly like this, it is working against you. So be sure and become a student of the proper posture. You don't have to be perfect. Just avoid extreme postures like this. If they don't hurt right away, trust me, eventually it will hurt later on. This is an example of proper and improper way to use your cell phone. Remember, the human head's about the weight of a bowling ball. If you're hanging your head forward looking down for extended periods of time, you're causing cumulative strain and stress of the neck, shoulder blade, and jaw over time. It's going to cause reflexive muscle spasm and tension and muscle fatigue. So, the simple act of keeping your head level, support your arm, raise your phone a little higher so that your head becomes more level and your eyes are not hanging straight down. Imagine if you had a heavy bowling ball attached to the top of your head, you might be able to balance it if you held it right on top of your head, but if you lean the bowling ball forward, imagine how much heavier it'll become through here. So people who have chronic TMJ problems a lot of times don't realize that it's from them constantly hanging their head forward or using a pillow that pushes the head forward all the time. Anytime you're relaxing at home, especially if you fall asleep, whether you're in an airport, at home, any side position at a funny angle is going to put your neck and your lower back at risk, especially if you fall into a deep sleep. So be aware of the position of your neck and your spine. Think of your spine and neck as a fine machine that you're trying to take care of. Text neck is a new term that describes the stress points of the spine here, here, and here. When you're hanging your head forward, the average effective weight goes way up. Think of your head like a bowling ball. If you're holding a bowling ball out here and you're hanging it down, it creates a tremendous cumulative stress here, here, and here, and triggers irritation and the sensors that are embedded between the spinal bones go to the muscles. So if you hang your head forward, that triggers those sensors and, and makes the muscles tight and then cumulatively builds and they get tighter and tighter and tighter. So without even realizing it, this seemingly simple posture can really aggravate your neck and your upper spine. So our main objective is to provide support in the middle of the neck. Notice how the emphasis is here in the middle of the neck rather than the back of the head. So if you're using a, a flat pillow that pushes the back of the head up or a, or a thick pillow or any kind of pillow that pushes the back of the head up, you're creating a problem. You're, you're losing the advantage of the arch right here. That arch is called the cervical lordosis and we want to shape that arch. Anytime you're supporting your neck, whether you're lying down on your back or whether you're sitting upright, just keep that in mind. We're trying to lift and shape and train that lordotic arch. Anytime you're sitting at a desk or a computer, it's imperative to try to keep the eyes as level as possible. You might need to get a larger monitor so that you're not having to lean forward. Notice how she's not leaning into the computer, which is a very common problem whether you're on a laptop or a desktop. Notice the arms. The arm is relaxed. The forearm is relatively horizontal. Normally I would put a cushion under the wrist so that you have proper alignment between the wrist and the keyboard and get your chair adjusted pro properly so that your head remains level. If you're having to look down or look up, that is a postural faux pas. It will cause problems over time. I'm very particular about this because I would hate to waste your time and money on trying to correct something and then you go home and 
continue to re-aggravate your neck and your upper back. So because this is a team effort and you want to actually move forward and make progress, these are the little things that can make all the difference. So if you're ever in a hurry, not thinking about your spine, poor posture, leaning forward, stressed out, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot and, and wasting your time coming in to our office for care when you have habits that are setting you back all the time. So you need to talk, start taking your spine seriously, start taking your health more seriously, and think of this as a fine machine that should be taken care of, that should be pampered, and just like you wouldn't park your fine vehicle with two wheels up on the curb because you know it'll bend the frame of your car and you've invested a lot in your car. Well, the same priorities should be applied to your posture and your spine. This is an example of a common postural faux pas that I see. People who are not thinking about their posture and they're not sitting up properly. The head is hanging forward. They're stressed out. They're not prepared to work. They have Im improper table height, tiny little laptop having to look in. So if you're investing your time and energy and money to correct your spine, your neck, your lower back, just like you wouldn't park your fine vehicle with two wheels up on the curb because you would bend the frame, you need to be thinking of your spine like a fine vehicle, like a fine Lamborghini. The more you take care of it and protect it, the better your results will be, the better your investment, and the longer you'll live, the healthier, the better quality of living you'll have in your life. This is another example of poor posture. Sliding down in the chair, dropping your head forward, improper support of the arms. This is going to aggravate your neck Anything that pushes the head forward is going to make your neck worse. It's going to make your jaws tight. It's going to create a pressure on the joints, discs, and nerves in your neck, causing irritation going down the arms. Having support in the middle of the neck rather than the back of the head is what we're going for. Sitting up so that the lumbar arch is supported and the neck arch is supported. So this is a great example of what not to do. So this is an example of good posture. Notice. The support is pressing into the lumbar region. It's a little bit of an arch. Notice that her ear and her shoulder are plumb line, dropping if you draw a line straight down. And this is good posture. Poor posture is slumping forward. Poor posture is overarching. Some people try to correct by overarching the lower back, by forcing it forward. You don't want to stress your back. You want it to be relaxed, but you want it to be supported. So there's a middle of the road between having good posture and overcorrecting your posture. It's going to cause cumulative tension between your neck and shoulder blades and jaw tension. Anytime you are relaxing, if you're sinking down into the sofa, nothing in the middle of the neck but a flat pillow in the back of the head pushing the head forward, no support in the lower back, it may not hurt right away, it may not bother you. But over time, you will in another example of what not to do. Notice there's no support of the middle of the neck. It's just pushing on the back of the head. He's sinking down into the sofa. There's no support of the lumbar spine. So there, it's collapsing here. It's the arch in the neck is collapsing. There's nothing pushing in the middle of the neck. It's just pushing the head forward. So this is a great example of what not to do. Over time, this will cause cumulative jamming of the neck and the cervical lordosis going the wrong way, triggering joint and disc and nerve irritation in the neck, possibly triggering pressure on nerves, causing numbness or tingling down the arms, headaches, jaw tension, lower back pain. This is an example of what not to do. This is something called a bed lounge. 
Notice that it has armrests and an adjustable neck support. The neck support should fit in the middle of your neck rather than the back of your head. I also like the fact that the neck support is adjustable and it's called a bed lounge. You can buy them on Amazon if you do a search with the words bed lounge. You should have no problem finding it. This is a support pillow that can be ordered at homehealthyliving.com. It's about $16.95. And if you put in your search car neck support pillow, you can order one of these. This is great for providing support. Notice that how it's pushing the middle of the neck and not the back of the head. This is the theme you'll hear me repeat over and over. We want to support the middle of the neck rather than the back of the head. Homehealthyliving.com and then do your search car neck support pillow. It's going to cause cumulative tension between your neck and shoulder blades and jaw tension. Anytime you are relaxing, if you're sinking down into the sofa, nothing in the middle of the neck but a flat pillow in the back of the head pushing the head forward, no support in the lower back, it may not hurt right away, it may not bother you, but over time you will in example of what not to do. Notice there's no support of the middle of the neck, it's just pushing on the back of the head. He's sinking down into the sofa, there's no support of the lumbar spine, so there, it's collapsing here, it's, the arch in the neck is collapsing, there's nothing pushing in the middle of the neck, it's just pushing the head forward. So this is a great example of what not to do. Over time this will cause cumulative jamming of the neck and the cervical lordosis going the wrong way, triggering joint and disc and nerve irritation in the neck, possibly triggering pressure on nerves causing numbness or tingling down the arms, headaches, jaw tension, lower back pain. This is an example of what not to do. This is something called a bed lounge. Notice that it has armrests and an adjustable neck support. The neck support should fit in the middle of your neck rather than the back of your head. I also like the fact that the neck support is adjustable and it's called a bed lounge. You can buy them on Amazon if you do a search with the words bed lounge. You should have no problem finding it. This is a drawing of the neck. Notice how the human neck has an arch. That's what we want. All the the human neck. Notice the arch. This would be considered a very healthy neck. So we want to train the arch of the neck. This provides a nice healthy shock absorber effect. The weight bearing load on the discs is optimized when the arch is, is correct. Most pillows that push the back of the head reverse this arch. So you lose the benefit of the arch, it goes into a reversal. So most pillows that are going to help you will be primarily supporting the middle of your neck rather than the back of the head. So if you lean your head back against a, a thick, fat, overstuffed or decorative pillow or a flat pillow or the edge of a sofa arm that pushes your head forward, without realizing it, you may not notice it right away, but gradually it'll cause neck pain, reversal of the arch of your neck, jamming of the joints, irritation of the discs, jaw tension, which is very, very powerful reflexive tension from these sensors that are embedded in these ligament capsules through here. So you want to encourage the natural arch of your neck. That's why most of my exercises that I teach are designed to press in between the joints and shape, shape, shape that natural lordotic arch of the neck. That's what we're going for. Here's a neck x-ray showing a reversal of the neck. So the one we were just showing was showing the normal arch which would, which would go this way. So these are like individual building blocks. 
The vertebrae are like building blocks. The space right here is the disc cushion. When you have a reversal and your neck is shaped this way, the weight-bearing load of your head over the course of your lifetime will create a jamming effect and a shearing force that breaks down the strength and, and resilience of the shock absorbers, the discs, the ligament capsules of your neck. So if you're using a pillow that's pushing the back of the head forward, you're making this worse. You're actually pushing this the wrong way. So most of the exercise, all the exercises we teach are designed to shape the neck so that little by little over weeks, months, and years, you begin to retrain the neck to achieve a normal lordotic arch. That's where the neck goes forward. That's what you want to reverse over time. An example of the very worst thing you could do for your neck. Notice how the sofa arm is pushing on the back of the head rather than the middle of the neck. Notice how there's no support for the lumbar region. There's no support for the laptop. So she may not be hurting right now. This is the classic case of a person that comes in and they don't know why, but they're having chronic jaw tension. They have TMJ problems. They're wearing a bite guard. They have chronic headaches. They have neck pain, pinched nerve in the neck, shooting down the arm. But they have no clue what's caused it. They have never had an injury that they know of. Without realizing it, this is cumulative. When you do it incorrectly like this, it is working against you. So be sure and become a student of the proper posture. You don't have to be perfect. Just avoid extreme postures like this. If they don't hurt right away, trust me, eventually it will hurt later on.